I love our police officers, but I'm getting sick to the back teeth of our police forces. Remember the absurdity of the pandemic with Derbyshire police flying drones over the countryside to find people out walking. An old lady arrested for sitting on a bench at the seaside drinking a coffee. People apprehended for queuing for sandwiches in farmers markets. People being harassed in supermarkets and on trains for not wearing one of those filthy, worthless masks. The policing of a bizarre 10 p.m. curfew in pubs. It was all an utter shambles. Stupid pandemic policies which have destroyed the country, enforced by gormless cops. What about the pathetic spectacle of police officers in Wakefield, West Yorkshire, sat there at a hastily assembled press conference where local clerics berated an autistic child for accidentally scuffing a copy of the Koran. The officers sat there nodding like the Churchill dog, lending credence to what was a ridiculous kangaroo court and the enforcement of a blasphemy law by the back door. What about cops asking insulate Britain nut jobs whether they'd like a cup of tea or a sandwich after they glued their hands to the motorway? Or what about cops dancing on the streets with Extinction Rebellion protesters whose only real ambition is the extinction of the British economy and our way of life? These are the same police forces that have wasted thousands of pounds on those absurd rainbow painted cop cars and raided people's homes for hurty tweets and unkind Facebook posts. Now, the officers are doing their best. It's a national scandal that while so much focus is on doctors and nurses pay, our bobbies on the beat have been under remunerated for two decades. If I was in charge, I would pay coppers far more. But I would also completely change the culture of policing and heads would roll at the top. Like Sir Mark Rowley, the ineffectual Met Police chief who has presided over those alleged peace marches which have left Jewish people in Britain afraid to leave their homes and where hateful thugs, including those calling for an intifada, which means suicide bombers on public transport and in shops, being allowed to run amok. And if it was possible yesterday, we saw an even lower point for British policing, with an Iranian man called Niak Gorbani, now living in the UK, arrested for the great crime of waving a placard which read, Hamas are terrorists. Now, calling Hamas terrorists is hardly a controversial view, unless, of course, you work for the BBC. Hamas are a prescribed terror outfit, according to the UK government. But hold up a sign that says that in central London and you'll have your collar felt. Now, the argument from the police is that this guy was agitating the crowd. But let me suggest that if saying that Hamas are terrorists would agitate the crowd, Surely it's the crowd that you should be worried about, not this anti-Hamas protester who was manhandled and injured. Take a look again at that nasty cut on his leg. That's a serious injury there. Poor bloke. Now, this guy was later de-arrested, whatever that means. Is that like when Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin consciously uncoupled? Now, those numpties at the Met Police offered a mealy-mouthed statement. Here it is. They said a video has been posted on X alleging officers arrested a man for having an anti-Hamas placard. This is not accurate. He was arrested after an altercation was ongoing and officers intervened to prevent a breach of the peace. He was arrested for assault. But here we go. Are you ready for the U-turn? Officers then fully reviewed footage provided of the incident and he was later de-arrested. The arrest was not made in relation to the placard. Sorry, I don't buy it. Either way, extremism has been allowed to proliferate on Britain's streets in the name of peaceful protest. If Jews are afraid to leave their house, the protest is not peaceful. If MPs are afraid to vote a certain way in a House of Commons division for fear of violent reprisals, which is what Sir Keir Starmer reportedly told the Speaker of the House, the protests are not peaceful. If you can project the words from the river to the sea, which to anyone with half a brain clearly means the elimination of Israel, then these protests are not peaceful. 
In fact, they're so against the law that the police should be enforcing them, but they're not. And look what happened today. Take a look at this. Met police officers stop and harass a Jewish man for holding a For Israel Against Anti-Semitism sign. Now, why is this guy being manhandled? And why is a message against anti-Semitism upsetting those on the so-called peace march anyway? I'll allow you to make your own conclusions. Now, we have the best police women and men in the world, but the culture and leadership of our police forces is failing British law, failing British values and failing British democracy. The Met Police were once branded as institutionally racist. Well, now they're institutionally useless. Your reaction, Mark, at gbnews.com. And don't forget to uh, get me your pictures of your mother's over. It is Mother's Day. So pictures of your mum, Mark, at gbnews.com. Let's hear from tonight's top pundits now, former BBC chief political correspondent John Sargent, uh, journalist and communications advisor Linda Jubilee, and last but certainly not least, former Labour special advisor Paul Richards. Uh, folks, great to have you with me in the studio. Linda, can I start with you? Uh, your reaction to the arrest and then de-arrest of this man, whose great crime was holding up a placard which said Hamas are terrorists? Well, clearly, um, the placard uh, was um, correct. I mean, what he said, Hamas are terrorists, um, is correct because mm. Hamas is defined as a terrorist group by this country. Therefore, mm. there was nothing wrong and with And the, the BBC placard. got there in the end, didn't they? But, yes, yeah, but a lot of the FT says exactly the same as the FT. Yeah, and Sky BBC, News, I think. And Sky News. So we, I don't think we can single the but BBC we don't, we, out. John, we don't really worry about Sky News, do we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> we, well, no, we worry about all these things, yeah. particularly on this programme, where I don't we have quite the same audience as the BBC. Oh, well, hopefully not. A much but, smarter audience. But so, so the placard was OK, but clearly what mm. the police were worried about, because that's not the only thing, the, the, the question about the placard was, was it litigious? Was it, in fact, it's a written word, so was it libelous? It is not libelous. It is regarded as a correct statement. So yeah. that's not going to be a problem. The problem was, was that guy likely to incite, incite racial hatred or violence? And that's why the police stopped him. They cuffed him, which means I assume that they then arrested him, mm -hmm. cautioned him and took him away. Probably he was safer being taken away. The question is, why didn't they arrest some of the other people that set upon him and caused, for example, that injury? Now, why didn't that happen? Yeah. I assume because they fear that if they did start arresting those people, the, the whole situation would explode. Paul Richards, you're shaking your head. It reminds me of that scene in A Few Good Men where the, you know, the killer argument in the court was, well, why did you need to get Santiago off the base if he was safe? And why did that man have to be removed for his own safety if those people were not tacit or even overt supporters of Hamas? Mm. Mm. If you can hold the sign up and not be bothered by anybody, then that would be fine. But the idea that he was at some threat for making that a perfectly obvious claim, mm -hmm. which is that Hamas is a terrorist organisation, he has to be removed for his own safety tells you everything you need to know about the people on the demonstrations, doesn't it? That's, Definitely. That's I mean, yeah. we, we can yeah. all agree there are plenty of people that have been on those marches and are on those marches who want an end uh, to the fighting. Well, they want Lenin, children and babies um, to stop, stop being um, murdered. Indeed. But, uh, but the, 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 the flavour of this suggests that there are a good number, more than just a small minority, on these marches yes. who seem to be sympathetic to Hamas. Well, Vladimir Lenin had a famous phrase, did he not, which was the idea of useful idiots. Mm. People who go along with these things because they they think it's a sort of mm. nice thing to be involved in. You know, we're all against war, aren't we? But actually being used by some yeah. quite nasty people. This mm. is the point that Michael Gove is making yeah. today, yeah. Uh, to provide cover for insidious organisations that are not uh, in tune with our values and, in fact, may even be pro-terrorist. So that's the whole point. Yeah, and uh, th it is worrying. I've been observing these demonstrations in central London. Mm. They're not nice places to be. You can't walk freely around Trafalgar Square and elsewhere. And it's happening in many of our town centres as well, actually, not just in London. Mm. And it's making these unsafe spaces. And I, I had a, a meeting, if you like, with a very senior member of the Jewish military community, if you like, ex-military mm. person. And I hadn't until that point realised the depth of fear that exists in the Jewish community now because of these huge marches. It's really palpable yeah. and, and it's very, very worrying. Tory MP Andrew Percy said that he feels safer in Israel than in the United Kingdom at the moment. Uh, John Sargent, 
The police are trying to keep the peace, but the optics of this is that they are placating the mob. Well, yeah, no, it, all these uh, points you're making are perfectly reasonable, but it's a question of what should the police do in these circumstances. These are very high controversial issues. You've got tens of thousands of people involved. The police have a duty, emphasised by the Prime Minister, to make sure that riots don't break out, mm -hmm. that order is not broken, and that the day ends with police being able to say there were no serious incidents. Mm -hmm no serious, dangerous incidents in the police. Now, that is an achievement, whether you like it or not. This is not to say, oh, does that mean all the people on the march were lovely? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that there were no extremists involved? Of course, there were all sorts of people with all sorts of backgrounds, including many Jewish people taking part. Mm -hmm. So the mistake is to imagine that the police, that the individual police constable, his job is to look to make sure, is there a danger that this could turn into a riot. Not the whole thing, but in this particular area. Now, if someone is producing a, 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 an anti-Hamas placard at that point, they are frankly being deliberately provocative. Well, Doesn't mean it's how can that no, be wait provocative? Wait no, no, because of the nature, the context it's in the which context. it's used. It, of course it's not, it per, it's absolutely perfectly straightforward, mm. as you say, completely truthful, not illegal, all that kind of thing. Are you not worried about the people who are no. upset by the placard no, what Hamas I'm, what, what I'm worried about is the idea that the police constable or mm -hmm. the police generally are sitting there thinking, oh, we've got 10,000 people here taking part in demonstrations, mm -hmm. but I think we may have to arrest all of them. You yeah. don't do that. You are a policeman saying, in this context, what should I do to make sure that there isn't a riot? It's okay, miraculous. They, wait a minute, and they then didn't charge the guy. He wasn't formally charged. They knew perfectly well they were taking him out of the situation. There was no question okay. of him then being arrested formally. Now, I arrested. also work very occasionally with a counterterrorism expert, Metropolitan Police mm -hmm. counterterrorism expert, who has said to me very recently, he believes that we are due another incident quite soon. Mm. I mean, he needs a major incident. Like a terror now, attack. Now, frankly... Does he mean a terror yeah, attack? He, he does. Of course, mm. all security experts yeah, yeah. discuss this mm. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Frankly, this is the fifth um, sure. protest, I think. Yeah. It's a miracle nothing has exploded before now. Yeah. It's also Indeed. a lot of restrained people, not only those taking part in the march, but a lot of restraint generally to make sure that this highly controversial, very difficult subject involving okay. tens of thousands of people in London... Well, if you just put all those together as ingredients in other places, there'd be CS gas, there'd be all kinds well, of things. Go to could Korea. Be riots. All right. would go on. Well, it's, Thousands it's, of people would have been arrested. Is, we don't have that in London. Interesting point. Is John Sargent right that actually the policing of these marches has been largely successful?